got Camaria. I am pronouncing that right. Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just been listening to uh, the single. Uh, what was it the, to lead? Love that song. I'm just like been listening to it over and over on loop, man. So. Oh, fantastic! Thanks so much for that, man. You're in the process of your second album. Yeah, that's correct at the moment. Yeah, we are. I uh, saw so your inspiration. One of them being him. I'm hearing a lot of that. Uh, I hear some Symphony X in there too, to be honest. Oh, awesome! Yeah, no, Russell Allen, absolutely, like one of my vocal idols. So thanks for that, man. I appreciate Russell that. Russell Allen, that, one, <laughs> one of mine too. So, oh, fantastic! Yeah. <laughs> um, and you're okay. As I got to be honest, the first symphonic metal band I know of from Australia. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. There's not a not a whole market for it down here unfortunately um there's a couple of bands that do do it but uh yeah i think we're probably one of the only ones <laughs> yeah well i'm very accustomed with more like silver chair uh symphonic metal coming from australia man i was just all over it i was like man these aussies man <laughs> thanks for that man yeah no it's, it's it's a lot of fun we really enjoy doing it uh now how, did you uh you did a uh, video last night on um well, was it, did y'all do a musical video or something for Halloween? No, so that was um, just via our Twitch channel. So that was Jerry, our guitarist, and Mishka, our keyboard mm. player. Um, we used to have a Twitch channel, uh, the sort of series a couple of years ago, where Jerry, our guitarist, would interview a bunch of musicians from sort of all over the world. And uh, then he sort of started Juni, and that sort of faded into the background a bit. And then... They decided to resurrect the Twitch, Twitch channel uh, just as a bit of a special for Halloween, and it went pretty well. So they might uh, sort of continue to to do it. So they had a lot of fun. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna have, have to watch, watch that. that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, where uh, where do you get your inspiration from? Yeah, so um, you know, you guys mentioned uh, him and Nightwish, so they're absolutely mm -hmm. up there for us. Uh, Camelot as well. Camelot have been one of our biggest influences for quite a long time. And, uh, you know, pretty much from the beginning, that's how the guitarist and I really connected. That was the band that kind of brought us together um, through that process of reinventing the band as a symphonic metal outfit, which would have been about sort of 10 years ago. So, yeah, definitely Camelot, uh, him and Nightwish are probably the big three for us. Well, how, how is, is the, the recording, recording process, process right, right now? now? <laughs> it's um, It's been great. Most of the album is done. We're doing it all ourselves. So it's... um taken a bit i'm producing it um uh, myself and i've taken about sort of six months off because my wife and i recently gave birth to our first uh kid so congratulations uh, yeah, thanks so much guys so that took that took a bit of time uh, out for us but now that she's sort of a bit older and my wife and i've settled in um i've recently as of i think the last couple of weeks uh gotten back into album production so yeah, sort of four on the floor there and really getting into it. Um, and it's 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 very close to being complete. I literally just have to add a couple of orchestral elements and then shoot it off for mixing, really. Okay. Everything has been recorded, yeah. So, so uh, what, what can, can we, we expect? expect? Anything you can do? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess in terms of what I can reveal, um, we're playing into a lot more of our gothic rock influences uh, on this record. So very much leaning into him and a bit of Ghost as well. Um, oh, so nice. it's, a, it's a fair bit, yeah, dude, yeah. <laughs> so it's a fair bit more upbeat. Um, you know, it's still got our, I guess, signature tragic romantic flair. But um, yeah, it's, I, I personally feel it's a lot more of a fun record. Um, our first, our debut album was quite conceptual and had a lot of deep themes uh this one does too but it's yeah a lot more upbeat and i think you know there's a couple of tracks that you know a few folks can dance to so <laughs> it's right. been a lot of fun work well, well that, that's, that's interesting, interesting because, because uh i should have brought the papa funkos man because i'm a oh. huge ghost fan <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah all of them. so oh i'm real uh the um three of us actually yeah yeah, three of us actually went and saw them. They were in Sydney only just recently, like a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had the chance to go and check them out, which was, I think, the first time they'd actually done a headline show in the country in about 10 years or something. So it was fantastic to see them. So inspiring, I guess. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Well, on your – can you walk me through the process on, like, uh, I guess, writing your songs? Do you, 
do you all like get together and write or is there just one main writer and then you go can you walk me through that process because i'm not i don't know much about the music industry yeah absolutely so we've all got our own home studios um i'll to usually tend to the bulk of the creative stuff but everyone really is a songwriter in their own right and so we all pull together ideas so nice. for the first album it was really just a collection of songs that the guitarist jerry and i had been working on over the course of about six years um and after that we kind of really got a taste for wanting to do things ourselves and seeing you know how we could push ourselves as songwriters and uh getting into like en the engineering and production side of things too um, you know, it's quite costly uh, getting into a right. studio and, um, you know, paying producers and mixing engineers and mm -hmm. recording engineers, and all that kind of stuff. And we really sort of wanted to go down that DIY route and it took us a couple of years to sort of figure it all out. But now we're in a position where we're able to do it all ourselves. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's a lot of fun and it allows us, I think, a more honest representation of the art because we're involved you know, in doing the whole process. Um, so we'll still shoot it off for mixing and everything. But um, yeah, for this particular album, we had a collection of demos that each of us had sort of worked on over the course of like a couple of years. And then we all sort of had a little mountain getaway uh, at our uh, one of our drummers' places um, up in the, in the Blue Mountains. And we stayed there for about a week and worked through all the demos and... Uh, hand-picked a couple out. I had a pretty strong idea of where I'd, I wanted to go uh, thematically uh, for the lyrical content of the album. And so, yeah, that was really, that was a really good experience. We sort of titled it this pre-production weekend and we literally just sat in this house for a week, went through all the demos, rewrote parts, compiled it all together and, you know, tried to make it as, <laughs> make as much sense as yeah. possible. And then since then it was very much, all right, that's the writing part of it done. Um, and then it was just about recording it properly. And so, we all pretty much did it at our own places because um, we've all got our own home studio setups. And then I've just been compiling everything and adding synths and, um, you know, different vocal layers and orchestral elements and stuff like that. So, yeah, it really is for us at this point in time a DIY uh, band. Um, but, yeah, like I said, we'll probably send it off to mixing because I'm not too confident in my ability as a mixing engineer just yet. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, you can – you do everything how you want it done. You don't have to rely on somebody else and you can really express your creativity in your songs that way. And you Brilliant. know, you don't exactly, you don't have somebody saying, Oh, well, you're paying me to do this. I want it done this way. You can do everything yourself. If you don't like something, change it. You know, you don't have to get permission and rely on somebody else. I, I really like that. Absolutely. I know it's I mean, a lot of work. And we're not forking out thousands of dollars to sort of do it. Right. Uh, so it means that we get to keep our budget for sort of marketing and promo costs mm -hmm. um, and, and sort of video uh, video clips as well. So, yeah, I think we, it's, it's allowed us to um, really retain a lot of our funds uh, for things that we're not able to do ourselves yet. But, yeah, as you said, it also, like, allows us that creative freedom to really get into the nitty-gritty of it and, um, and be quite creatively free. And, and bes besides the art, you, you seem, seem to, to release, release a lot, lot of outside out EPs. Was that something uh, uh, structurally you wanted to do? Because I've noticed a lot of bands now doing that again. Mm. Yeah, well, we haven't. Uh, I think we, the like the band prior to me joining, um, this is back when they were a progressive rock outfit. They released uh, one EP with uh, five tracks, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then the sort of the, this was back in 2012, I think. And then the band split up in 2013. And went on a, a bit of a hiatus. So I came on board in 2014, and that's kind of when we decided to go down a more symphonic metal route. Um, but yeah, for us, it's it's we've only released the yeah the, the debut album, uh, one single, and now we're working on the second album. I think right. for, for us and for our you know creative vision, albums just work a lot better for us. It's not really the in thing at the moment. I know a lot of bands um, are sticking exclusively to releasing singles, um, but I think uh, for us being able to uh you know explore that sound and like tell a story right. across the course of an album that that's just something that's important important to us creative uh, creatively so yeah i think that's why we've sort of stuck with the more album structure yeah, yeah i can i can, I can tell, tell the, the progression. progression like i said once i got to that elite the blind 
it was just uh, it was like everything cloned so well you know what i'm saying <laughs> by that one and i was like these guys it, it's progression constant progression and uh that is what intrigued me to the band originally mm. yeah we're uh like i said that's the second album i can't wait you know it's like and you've got creative control so not a lot of producers in the way i'm sure that's yeah well, it's the certainly first song i'd mean... heard mm. oh i'm sorry go ahead oh no i was, I was just gonna say it, it certainly helps um you know being able to produce it ourselves but that said we've always sort of had quite good experiences with the producers we've worked with. So we haven't really right. anyone cracking the whip super hard, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and they've also been very generous, uh, particularly Lord Tim, who produced our first album. I learned a lot off him and, mm -hmm. um, you know, so in, in terms of being generous in education, that was such well, a yeah. pivotal role from me as a songwriter and as a producer, uh, being having the opportunity to learn off him. Um, I really valued that. So, yeah, we haven't really worked with anyone that we've had, you know, sort of come to blows with, but right. um, it definitely helps just being able to do it all ourselves now. Nice. Yeah. When he told me about, about your, you know, your name and everything. And I, I looked it up and the first song I listened to was morning star. What, what was that imp inspiration for, for doing that song and writing that song? So that was, that's quite an interesting one. That was one of the first, the very first songs that Jerry uh, and I wrote together. Um, I had this little, just a little sort of key, like idea on the piano. Um, and this is back in the day. I think we were actually sharing ideas via Guitar Pro 5 or something like that. Uh. Literally just sharing ideas via tablature software. And um, I had this little keys thing. And um, he sort of took that and wrote a couple of chord progressions and some instrumentation around it. And, um, you know, we played around with a couple of different melodies and actually let it sit you know, for six years before we did anything with it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that was something that, you know, it, it, that was very much something that was built over a long period of time. And we sort of added little elements um, over the course of our time together uh, working on the album. And at the end of it, we sort of, you know, took a step back and, and figured that, oh, I think we've actually got a single here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, and then we took it to our producer, um, Tim, and he, our producer at the time, and he kind of came up with all these ideas for vocal layering and all that kind of stuff. And that really became part of our signature sound. He does a lot of uh, vocal layering in his band, Lord. Um, it, used to, it used to be called Dungeon, big 90s uh, metal band. And um, a lot of his vocal arranging influence, I think, rubbed off on me throughout the course of our time working together. So now I'm all about, you know, <laughs> implementing big choir arrangements and, and, and stuff in our songs, particularly in the choruses. Uh, do your, uh, your, your symphonic, symphonic have those pre-recorded from the actual symphony? I know some people do it differently. Yeah, so we, all of our, uh, we use plugins for all our orchestral uh, sounds. It, it's just so costly to, to hire an orchestra to, to play anything oh, in. And mm -hmm. so... All of our stuff is done using uh, East, the East West libraries. Um, mm -hmm. They're absolutely fantastic set of sounds. And, you know, you're just not going to get that same sound from doing it yourself because they've sampled them from, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> the best rooms with the best players uh, and the best instruments. So that's what we use for all our uh, orchestral sounds. I definitely, I definitely heard, heard uh, uh, can hear a lot of good orchestra. And for yeah. a sound like that, yes. That's pretty awesome. So um, are y'all planning on a big tour? Yeah, that, that's the plan. I mean, they're really, there's not a whole lot of places to tour in Australia because we've mm -hmm. really only sort of focus on the East Coast because it's just not financially viable to go out west right. to Perth or even to Adelaide. For the um, debut album tour, we did Brisbane, Sydney, Canberra, uh, Melbourne and Adelaide, just sort of the bigger cities. And, you know, we're driving in a car cramped up with all the gear and, you know, it was, um, you know, it was a, it was a great experience. It was really fun, but uh, you know, the cities are so far away. Like Sydney to Melbourne, it's you know a nine ten hour drive, um, and similar up to Brisbane, and then similar from Melbourne to Adelaide. So there are some you know little towns that you can play in between. But in terms of doing a, a tour with massive dates, mm -hmm. um, it's it's sort of pretty hard to organise uh, down in Australia. But we'll we'll definitely be looking at touring the album. Um, mm -hmm. but it might just be sort of a five or six date tour. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, we would, we would love, love to have, have you over here. here. Oh, yeah, we'd absolutely. love to come over there. 
Yeah, overseas tour, touring is definitely the dream. Um, so yeah, hopefully one day. So we'll, we'll get, get a good, good promo, promo, and we're, and we're gonna, gonna try, try to. to it's like, like it's come to America, get Camaria <laughs> over to America right now. Come on, let's do this. Yeah, let's make it happen, boys. <laughs> well, do you feel you have like? Um, are you picking up? seeing a lot of traction with american fans uh or you kind of still are you picking up over in europe how how have you noticed things progressing and reaching out and and your fan base is coming from yeah so i think actually if you go on sort of our spotify numbers our largest demographic is actually in the u.s um mm -hmm. i think and then australia is like second um don't quote me on that. I just think so. Mishka and Jerry tend to run the marketing and business side of things. Um, and so they've got a bit more of a better idea on that than I do. But I vaguely remember them saying the other week that it, they were quite surprised that we had more of an audience in the U.S. than we did here. I think it resonates really well with the U.S. I think, I think we, we just, just we, we love, love that, that fresh, fresh sound stuff. of symphonic metal. Um, mm. and, and I'm trying to introduce it to my children. Uh, it's something it's not as popular but uh you know i introduced him to you know he likes like mass what was it uh, sabaton sabaton a oh, yeah. you know that type stuff yeah. you know? so that when he when he introduced me to your your music that's what i really you know and he introduced me to nightwish and he introduced yeah. ghost you know and, so and therion yeah oh yeah <laughs> I got kind of oh, I'm real. <laughs> yeah, uh, if he can see it, yeah, it's fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Gothic Kabbalah. Yeah, but uh, fantastic. But yeah, I can see where it resonates with American listeners. I think it will grow, and I'm really hmm. looking forward to the progression of second album. It just feels like uh, every single I hear, it's like you get a better take on it every time. We just got to get these guys over into our market, man. Yeah, it it all all kind of boils down to reaching the people and once they hear you you guys are great and i mean if they hear just one thing they're going to start listening to others because i mean everything that i've heard i've loved and you know definitely if you like that type of music you're, you're definitely just going to pick up and listen to the whole album you know well clear vocals I'm a yeah yeah, for sure. vocals. yeah and i like the I like the heavy metal aspect and things like that, but also the clear vocals, you know, it's like, uh, you know, Dragon Force was one of my big ones. You know, it was yeah. really heavy metal and, and fast paced, but yet the guy singing like he's from the 80s, you know, and that's what <laughs> I really enjoyed about them. Yeah, I can hear some, I can hear some definite 80s in there. Like I said, I, I compared to him. I said, well, there's some Symphony X there. I hear some night wish. Uh, there was something else. I, definitely I him. Know. Yeah. 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 Which, which is so funny because they, they're definitely one of my biggest influences. They're one of our keyboard players, biggest influences, but we never, you know, I never sort of look back on that first album and think him, like it just wasn't really something that we mm -hmm. thought about when we were constructing it. Second album, totally different. Absolutely. We're leaning into that more goth rock, but there are still some heavy songs, but yeah, it was, it was so funny when we were touring that first album, we had people coming up to us after the shows and saying, oh, you guys sound just like him. And it really didn't, mm -hmm. it, it just didn't compute for me. Like it, I, I sort of didn't really see it that way, but, you know, obviously flattered because, you know, Billy Ballow, one of my favorite singers. So it was um, absolutely a compliment. It just, uh, yeah, it never, never really felt that way to me, but, you know, I guess music's subjective, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, and you may come up with your own, kind of genre which is a mix between you know like his love metal or love rock and then you've got your symphonic aspect to it and just mesh it together and there's no telling you know that's got great potential there there's no telling the outcome that that would sound like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that you still <laughs> you're good there we go oh, there he goes sorry fi finally now all the way yeah, I just had a fine <laughs> girl now. <laughs> the, the new single, single sideways. sideways. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Are you, have you done anything with pirate themes? No, we haven't actually. Um, funnily enough, we uh, we had a few working titles on the new album that were quite piratey, and we sort of, sort of had to take a step back and went, "Hold on a minute, this isn't a pirate metal 
record. I've got to change up some of these titles. But, um, you know, never say never. Maybe in the future we'll become a pirate goth band. Who knows? Well, let <laughs> me know because I'm always ready for a new pirate ad. So. If you, have you heard of Lagerstein? I don't think I have. I don't know. You might introduce me to a new one here. Yeah, um, Australian pirate metal band. So definitely check them out. You, you, you got, got my, my attention. attention. Well, well uh, there you go. There's the music for the uh, show right there. I'm sure we can mm-hmm. right. negotiate. May even have our own intro song done by them, you know. Yeah, man, hit them up. <laughs> are you in uh, Sydney area, or are you pretty pretty good ways? Uh, so I'm in the Blue Mountains, so okay. about, yeah, sort of about an hour and a half, two hours west of Sydney. Okay, okay. I figured it was the city area. area. Know how far out you were because Australia mm. is a huge place. And when I yeah, well, we, we we were certainly based in um based in Sydney originally, and then mm-hmm. we started moving a bit further out west. Yeah, now we I guess you know you could probably call us a Blue Mountains band because three of our members now live in in the Blue Mountains. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, have y'all had a lot of change in members. Yeah, so um, I've been in the band since 2014, uh, and our Jerry's the only sort of original member from when Come Area was a progressive rock band back in sort of 2012. Um, I came in in 2014. Mishka, the keyboard player, and Lachlan, the drummer, came in in, in about 2018. And then Emma, our bass player, came in at, a, oh, I think, about 2021. Okay, I think I, think I, I remember, remember a female keyboard player from one of the... Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was uh, Lisa. So she... Left the band in 2018, and that's when uh, Mishka came in. So she okay. was in. She was on the first uh, on Carpe Noctum and Solaris, which were the first two singles were released in 2016 and 2017. Oh, well, yeah, yeah the, the keyboard, keyboard player. player I, I thought, thought uh, uh, that guy looks like he would have been in Therion. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love the uh, keyboard guitar going on. Oh, the guitar, yeah. Guitar. <laughs> Well, it, there's a ghost reference right there too. I mean, oh, a hundred percent. And he keeps hounding me to pick, uh, you know, ghost-like synth lead, um, you know, tones for the for this album. So, yeah, we'll definitely be uh, leaning into that a bit more. And I think for the live shows as well, uh, he's he actually our, our last show. He had the um, you know, his keyboard and his guitar stacked on top of it. And mm-hmm. for the solos in a couple of the newer songs, he brought them out and came up front of front and set of stage. So that was a lot of fun. And there's one of the new songs has a dueling guitar and guitar solo. So um that's been a lot of fun to do. So you'll you'll definitely hear that on the new record. <laughs> uh, are we gonna hear a saxophone solo in the- <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> It'll be my, my fault. fault. <laughs> no, yeah, <that's- laughs> Uh, what would it be? Tim Capello or something? It'd be like guest star. We're trying to get yeah, him we'll... eventually. <laughs> oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we'll figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> Do the Lost, Lost Boys tour. Yeah. There you go. Um, and so um, you said, it, will the uh, album be finished by the end of the year, probably? or the end of Yeah, the that's the plan. So um, we're just in the, in the midst of finishing off uh, drums as well. And then I've just got a you know, tighten up some of the orchestral flourishes mm-hmm. because I've spent six months away from the songs. Um, coming back to it now, you know, I'm hearing a couple of little production elements uh, and a few little changes here and there. Nothing massive, just like, you know, minor little note tweaks and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, that'll probably take me the next month or two. Um, but the idea is to definitely have it finished by the end of the year because we're looking, we're looking to organise an early 2024 release. Okay, okay, so, so your, your structure, structure, do you, you start, start off with the vocals, vocals? or uh, how do you write? That, I guess that's what I'm mm-hmm. asking back and forth. Um, so personally for me, I actually start with the music. Um, so I'll typically start with a chord progression and then I'll introduce a vocal melody and then I'll rewrite the instrumentation around the vocal melody. Um, and so I'll, you know, when I write for the band, I'll typically come up with a complete song and show it to the guys, and then they'll put their flourishes on it. Um, Mishka and Jerry uh, write together quite a bit, uh, and so they'll, you know, if they're working on a track, they might uh, come up with a, a sort of instrumental draft, and then they'll either sh- they'll shoot it to me, and I might rearrange a few parts, add a segue here or there, and then write vocals and lyrics. Um, and, yeah, so it, it, it really depends. You know, like, there's a song on the album... Uh, that our bass player Emma actually sings and 
how that came about was one, she's an incredible singer and we really wanted, you know, her to have a lead track on the album. And two, I was really fucking struggling with coming up for a vocal melody for this instrumentation I've written. And so <laughs> I'd come up with this song and I, um, I came up with a few melodies for it, but it just wasn't hitting. It wasn't feeling right to me. Um, yeah, I, I just wasn't feeling it. And so I shot it off to her and I was like, Hey, I'm struggling with this one. Um, do you want to have a crack at it? And she did. And what we, you know, what she came up with, I sort of fell in love with and she shot through the lyrics and they were perfectly suited to the theme of the album. And um, yeah, so we left it in and then, you know, recorded her vocals on it properly. So yeah. <laughs> Sounds like she nailed it there. Oh, she did. Yeah. Incredible singer. I'm jealous. <laughs> You're jealous? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, that's great that everybody can kind of pitch in and help. Because, you know, if you're struggling, if you're the only one writing, you know, you, you could get pretty far on a song and it's just, you lose your creativity. You know, I do paintings and things like that. And, you know, mm. you can lose that creativity and then just, you've got to shelve it. You've got to move on and yep. do something else. And you may come back to it, you may not. So that's great that you've got others in there with you that know what you're trying to get at or they keep to the theme because they think alike like you do and then they can pitch in and you know help you with the lyrics or or whatever and just keep the overall feel the same you know keep the theme mm -hmm. the same and that's yeah. that's something that's that's really great yeah it is absolutely there's some positive vibes from what you're talking today you got this upbeat kind of feeling coming with the new mm. album. And, you know, with the state of the world and everything else today, that just sounds great, man, because it's just like keep on going forward. So that that's the vibe I'm getting from you. Mm. Well, that's that's it. The, the music certainly, you know, it's, it's a lot more energetic um, and there is a lot more of that gothic rock influence. The, the over, overarching um, lyrical themes are still quite dark. Um, you know, this I might be spoiling it a bit here, but this song very much focuses on love and tragedy. So it is really leaning into that him kind of style. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, it's 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 sort of one big collection of tragic love songs. But see, this um, can be really, really upbeat, upbeat though. On the other hand, it's just well, absolutely. I mean, you know, you just you only have to look at him to sort of see that, and that's that's right. something that. I personally, personally really enjoyed as a songwriter and lyricist is, um, you know, sort of pushing myself to write within that scope. It's, it's also one of those, one of the things that has just, I guess, come naturally with my evolution as a songwriter. Um, and same with the other guys. It, it definitely just felt right uh, for us. It didn't feel like we were sort of trying to um, stay within one genre or pigeonhole ourselves. Um, it all felt quite natural. So I think that's, something that has us quite hyped um mm. for this new album because it, it feels authentic to to what we want to do as artists um you know we're not necessarily trying to copy you know a particular template we're definitely mm. allowing our influences to bleed through it a bit wow. but um yeah but we're not we're not sort of we don't, we don't feel rigid within this uh frame of writing well that's, oh, that's my, my favorite, favorite kind of writing, writing. It's, it's when, when you, you can make make such a heavy subject and it makes you we hope so, yeah. <laughs> huh? Well, that, I mean, that's that's what I get from uh, most of your music. Um, like I said, and the look, um, mm. the look, yep. I'm getting a little Peter Steele vibes. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> Minus the deep voice, of course. But, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think the when the the longer hair, I said reminds me of Peter Steele somehow, man, and and that was of course an influence on him. On Valo was typo name. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And it's funny, you're, you're actually not the first person to, to say that. I think there's about two live reviews um, out there that quote me as like a Peter Steele doppelganger. Maybe there's something going on there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've, you and Poison Black are the only two I've seen. It was like, damn it. You should check them out sometime, Ben. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> It's Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yep. Australian, symphonic, and then you get Portuguese. You know, and I've kind of moved towards, I'm glad y'all are recommending these. 
because I have moved towards things outside of the U S because mm -hmm. stuff in the U S is just, I don't know. It, to me, it's just like, there's really yeah. no heart. Yeah. There's really no heart. There's nothing inventive. It's there's becoming obsolete. It's all just, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to be talented. You just let the computer do, you know, let the AI do yeah. it, be somebody to do it and this and that. And it's just, it, it's not fun anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just the same old stuff. And that's why I'm really, you know, even in something, even if it's in a different language, if I like the tune, I like the melody, it's worth listening to, you know, because I can still get a feeling from the tune or the melody, you know, versus not knowing what they're saying, you know, but it just, in music, it just makes me feel a certain way, you know, and that's kind of what I relate to. And, you know, like I said, here in the U S you just, you're not really getting that anymore. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I can, I can give you a couple of recommendations if you want to check out, uh, there's a, a great, uh, Gothic symphonic metal band down in Melbourne, uh, called Victoria K. Uh, they're great friends of ours and we nice. actually did our album tour with them. Um, and there's also a Brisbane Viking symphonic metal band or epic metal band called Valhalla. Uh, and they're okay. just, you know, the most wonderful people, but also the most phenomenal musicians. So I highly recommend uh, checking those two out because they're what? good friends of ours and, um, yeah, fantastic musicians too. Well, you, well, you remember, remember the British, British invasion, invasion of rock <laughs> back in the day. I think yeah. we've got the Australian <laughs> invasion. The Australian on, invasion, yeah. On the way up symphonic metal i'm telling you i quote me they'll watch this and i'll look like a genius in a couple of years <laughs> you know, like, oh, all right let's bank on it here's hoping <laughs> yeah and uh yeah it's like we we got them aboard on the the pirate ship here and then it does yeah well yeah and that was that was kind of the thing you know when i discovered them on a mark you know their their overall theme which you know i like the heavy metal and and the rock and all that but you know they're not singing about this or that it's all kind of like just the viking like history you mm -hmm. know what i mean you know the arson is probably my favorite song that they done and you know it was just about this little village getting attacked and mm -hmm. you know they fought until they were all trapped and they're like well we can either die here or let's just charge out and die in the blaze of glory in battle. And that's, you know, that's to me was just an awesome song. The lyrics, everything was just awesome. Another thing, Sorry. you know, like, yeah. And you know, another thing like Sabaton, you know, it's about the great war, you know, mm. it, it, it follows that theme along that. And it's not just something, a lot of things are over here, like uh, drugs or, or, or just whatever, you know, and, to me, it's just not, it's not good anymore. And that's, that's why I like, I like the, I like the themed stuff, and, you know, and that's why I like ghosts too, you know, his theme mm -hmm. type stuff. So Absolutely. to me, it just, you know, you can tell a story with music and you just, you don't really get that. Yeah. And I, I think it, it, it's so, yeah, it's so important. And, um, you know, the, the, the thematic bands, like it's, it's so interesting because they really do go headfirst into you know committing to what they're doing like you know the viking metal bands um the gothic metal bands and it really kind of they just encompass that whole culture within their music and it's it's such a great thing to see and you know that like it's it's refreshing and it's new and you're getting yeah pirate bands and all these different like you know mm -hmm. wind rover coming out uh, to australia next year they're a dwarven band you know it's like uh. um, <laughs> it's so cool like uh, and it's it's so much fun um, and it really pulls you into that world a lot more than if you're just sort of standing up in a, you know, black shirt, blue jeans, you know, singing rock music. I can't really talk because that's exactly what I'm wearing now, but uh, <laughs> you get my meaning. <laughs> well, that's, that's what, what we, we do, do too. too. Of course, <laughs> you know, you're talking about influences, probably, mm. it bleeds through. Just like anybody from Finland, historically, you know, it's when that Celtic music comes in, all these things. Mm. And I think it's important for us as Americans, especially with symphonic music, we imbibe a lot of your traditional music. And that's what mm. I feel a lot. And I feel like yeah. if you listen to these guys, you're going to get a taste of Australian. And uh, I, I mean, it, it's up, like I said, I tell more Americans and maybe it pass over to Europe. 
the same way. And mm. it just comes through the music. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, I'm sure I had ancestors that were Vikings at one time. Probably. Maybe, maybe that's why you feel such a connection to Viking metal. <laughs> Or pirates. I'm wondering about the pirates. I'm a pirate, sorry. <laughs> I mean, look at our new backdrop. Right. Oh, and, cool. You know, our, our our theme and our names kind of come from, you know, we've known each other since high school. And, mm. you know, we're, we're big gamers and things like that. So that's kind of where we got our names from is just our gaming tags. And we kind of took it and ran with it, you know, and we just kind of created this whole thing and – so it's you know people are like well i don't get it well I, well that's okay that's we get it that's all that matters you know yeah, well yeah exactly they don't have to get it you know <laughs> right well and that's why we wanted you on the show we wanted an eclectic mix of stuff that we really like that's what we do man we're i was like as soon as i heard y'all i was like i gotta have them on the show yeah well thanks so much for having me on man like it's been so good to talk to you guys it's actually the first interview i think i've done in about two years so really <laughs> yeah because we um you know we, we toured the album and then uh took some downtime to to write and work on the album and then yeah I sort of my wife and i had our baby and so it's it, it just hasn't really been something that uh, uh has i guess you know happened for, for a while so yeah first interview in a couple of years so thanks so much well i understand that i have a lot of kids too man so it's like doing this show uh mm. this, is this is the, the new, new format. format you're, you're the, the first one. one on the new format since it was just nexus pirate and a matter of fact are, are you familiar with stuck mojo i don't think so rap metal band from the 90 to 2000 no Lord no i don't Nelson, think so the rapper on there I had him mm. on one of my shows. Another good person to do an interview. Names. Fantastic. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll definitely check him out. Um, yeah, yeah, I know Fuzzy. Okay. I, um, <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't tour. I, pl I played uh, their Sydney show uh, when they came oh. over. Okay, Rich Ward yeah, that, that was, was probably about 2017, 2018, yeah. Right, Rich Ward. He was the uh, Stuck Mojo guitarist. And, uh, oh, yeah, cool. Lord Nelson. And uh, so he's on their five Royals entertainment. So mm. we connect a lot on people. So another, it would be really cool interview. Very charismatic guy. And he likes Vikings too, even though he might not admit. It. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> and uh, he likes pirates, whether he wants to admit it or not. Ah, good, good. Yeah, he, he can't not like pirates. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, I was going to call him Barnacle at first, but he insisted on solving <laughs> crawl dad being my gamer tag, you know, so I'd be on Xbox or something playing, playing with buddies and, you know, their wives. Well, who are you talking to? Oh, I'm talking to Salty, you know, so it's just something that kind of stuck. And as I moved to different platforms versus, you know, whether it be Xbox, Steam, you know, whatever, I always... Yeah. I always just choose that name because it just kind of stuck. And I, I told him, I was like, well, you know, you went with the Nexus Pirate, so I might as well just keep my gamer tag, just Salty Carl Dad, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the singer of Camaria. And don't forget, the album will be coming out hopefully by the end of this year. Promise some really awesome. Oh, well, the, the album will be coming out early next year, but hopefully completely early next year. 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 Fingers <laughs> crossed, guys. <laughs> Remember, rock on. That's our new format. Way hanging up, she rises her lie in the morning.